Okay, hey, it's Eric with Ride Labs, and you might have seen the video where I crashed this bike really bad and I snapped the rear triangle. Oh! oh my goodness! It's probably like I should just get a new bike, you right? Should, well, quite possibly. <laughs> just get a new frame and then swap out all the components that you have. That's a bummer. It broke all the way around all this side around this see you can see the crack here then let's pull it around over here for a second there we go that all got cracked up in there and around there okay so a guy at the local shop mike over at utah mountain biking happened to have one of these kits i guess they're like 30 bucks on amazon or ebay or something and he loaned it to me. So very nice of you, Mike, thank you. Go check out Mike's shop. He's got a great shop. That's where I got my Rocky Mountain Instinct, which actually is kind of like, you know, this is such a bummer that this happened, but I ended up with a new bike. So I'm really thankful, you know, for how, how all that worked out. And if I can get this fixed, I'm gonna give it to my son for his birthday on Sunday. So I gotta get it done today so that it can cure in time, hopefully, so we can have that for him. I've not done this before, but I've heard but it's just like uh, working with, uh, you know, resin and fiberglass for like a surfboard or something, which I've done a lot of. So I don't think it'll be too challenging, hopefully, but uh, you get to watch me do it and see how well it turns out. So uh, here we go. I'm curious if I should like pop this thing off or something. Should I put carbon over it? This is like part I'm sort of stuck on. So anyway, you definitely need to sand all around. So yeah, you need to create a rough surface that this stuff can connect to. If I rip it off, I'm gonna have a giant gaping hole in the frame. If I go over it, will it be strong enough? I don't know. I think I'm gonna go over it. If it doesn't work going over it, then I can always rip it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna take this roll, wrap it around the area and hope that it will flatten around that metal grommet thing. You wanna wipe it down with something like a Clorox wipe or you can use water, I guess, something. Just to get all that dust off. Let that dry, of course. Okay, so these are the instructions that it came with. You can pause the video right there and read them. Hopefully you got a clear picture. Um, so, but basically the, the main points are two parts of resin to one part of the catalyst or the hardener. We're going to want gloves on. Oh yeah, it's nice and dry now. Not that my floor would care, but I don't want sticky stuff down there, I guess. Okay, so I've just got a little paper here. It looks pretty dry. You have 25 minutes, that's my understanding, before it really starts to uh, get hot. And so what it does is it creates a chemical reaction, the catalyst does, the hardener, and starts the reaction, and you've got a little bit of time to work with it. It'll get thicker by the minute until finally it starts to be really tacky and difficult to work with. So, so that is the hardener doesn't say catalyst, but I called it catalyst. That's call it a catalyst because it triggers the reaction. And that is the epoxy resin. Okay, before I do this, I am going to cut the cloth so that it is the right length once I find it. All right, so it's gonna wrap. I wanna wrap it three times at least. Oh. Okay, so this is just a little trick. I'm, I turn the scale on with the glass jar on it so that that's zero. So that when I put in the first part, that's gonna be, you know, double the second part, right? So zero, now we're gonna pour in the epoxy resin. Okay, so that says seven grams. That one actually hit eight and it just turned off, which is very frustrating. 
So now I need to pour in, so I just reset it now with the resin in it and we're gonna pour this in, we're gonna pour in four. And it went a little high, so this is gonna be hot. And that is frustrating, so I'm gonna just pour in, it was two of this, so it went too high, so I have to pour in four grams. I'd rather it be hotter than, than too cold because if it's too cold, it's gonna be tacky. So we're gonna stop there, that's a little bit hot, but we're gonna mix it. Just mix it up really well. Oh man, is that enough? I think that's definitely enough. Okay, so then the first thing I'm gonna do is paint it all over. Get it off my mixer here, stick. Okay, so I'm gonna paint this all around. And that's pretty good coverage. Now I'm gonna start wrapping carbon fiber. I'm just gonna cut that right there. Sorry, Mike, I'm wasting a piece. So I'm just gonna try and get this to hold real tight and get the, the air pockets out of there, which is gonna be challenging because of that stinking grommet. But that's why we have the tape. I'm gonna tape it really nice and tight. Okay, wow. Well, it is difficult with this grommet here to get this to seat. So I'm gonna really rely on some tape here. Will you grab that? Just peel it off, but don't touch that resin. Thanks, that's great. If this works, that'll be pretty cool because that stuff was not seating very well around that grommet. And if it doesn't work, I'll sand it down. And we'll put another coat. Cool. Well, that's pretty well wrapped up. Actually, I'm really glad I have duct tape for that because duct tape was very strong and it's holding it nice and firmly. So. Hopefully that can just squeeze that carbon and resin, epoxy, whatever, all around that. And we will be able to just have a nice solid bike when we're done. So then the question is, is do you think a Clorox wipe? Hey, yeah, it's wiping it right off. Well, there you go. My first attempt at repairing a carbon frame. It is kind of like working with, uh, you know, resin and fiberglass. Hopefully it turns out. If not, we'll just sand it down and do it again. So this is Eric with Ride Labs and we'll be back in three days. Okay, it's not three days later because I'm sort of out of time. So I'm gonna take it off. I think it's 40 hours, but uh, I did add a little patch right here just because I had dinged this and that way it kind of allowed me to monitor how well cured it is and it feels really solid. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the tape now and see what kind of a mess there is under here. I really hope it worked. Here we go. Well, that looks pretty dang cool. It seems that the pressure from the tape really did what we wanted it to do, fill in any gaps and holes.
still a little bit of wax paper. There we go. So you can see the break was right here. We have some wrinkles from the wax paper that I taped around it, but the tape caused the epoxy to squeeze into all the holes that I needed it squeezed into. So, you know, I, I'm okay with that. You could do another, another coat on here if you wanted. I think I'm just gonna go with that for now and see, looks pretty good. All right, well, there you go. Repaired the carbon frame. It's a lot like fixing a surfboard, which wasn't very hard, honestly. In fact, it was easier than fixing a surfboard. Much easier to repair than I thought. I called around for some estimates on repairs and I was getting the three and $400 range and a new triangle. I think it was going to be about four or $500. If your bike breaks, maybe you can repair it with a $30 kit from Amazon like I did. Well, there's the repair. I mean, you can see it, but <clears throat> nice and strong, I think. Anyway, I'm super excited about it. Uh, you know, instead of spending 400 bucks on someone else to repair it for you, you know, give it a shot, see if you can do it. This is Eric with Ride Labs. Thanks for watching my uh, rear triangle repair. And uh, hopefully you'll be seeing this bike on the trail with me since I'm gonna be giving it to my son for his birthday tomorrow. So glad I got it done in time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, click the logo right there and uh, follow along.